You, yeah. you can start with the question if you'd like. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's fine with me. You, you can start with the question. I mean, I think everybody here knows where we're going okay, and who we're playing. Out? So that's... So, you know, the fact that you guys have already made this, you know, first wins, what stopped you from getting complacent? Obviously, I know it's week 16. You want to keep this run going, right? Well, I think it's more... Uh, first of all, there's never been a complacement with this team um, for, for 34 games. I think that... Uh, we just know it's we we get to continue to play. We've been this team has just been I think phenomenal when it comes to keeping uh, the game that we're playing in the present, uh, understanding what we have to do, and uh, following a game plan. They've been very coachable. They you know take the game plan in and uh, execute it, and that's what you you know we definitely saw. I, I would say guys probably. <laughs> I mean, the, I, I believe I read something we lost 11 games ago. And uh, when we lost that game, it wasn't because we didn't follow the game plan. So th this team understands what we need to do um, to compete. And the outcome will be what it, what it is. We've always focused on the process. And it's, there's never a complacency with this team at all. And we, we talked to students today who are just over the moon about the team. I mean, guys, girls, it doesn't matter. They are stoked. They're ready to watch this game. They're so excited. You know, how does that feel, you know, coming back here and just hearing about how every, excited everybody is? Well, I think we saw, uh, at least I saw, um, Hunter's Ale House. You know, there were over 300 people. And I know um, at a couple, I know, I think it was at O'Kelly's and at B-Dubs, is that what you, B, D, BW3 or something? Yeah, B-Dubs. They, uh, they had it going on there, too. And so I think it's, it's um, an excitement, obviously, for the university, but for the city of Mount Pleasant. But I also think it's for, you look at the majority of our, our players, where they come from, so the hometowns are also uh, very excited. And so I, I think it's great. And I think all that does is it, it, it uh, will help us, you know, in the following years to come that people can come out and watch a really good style of basketball. What kind of challenges does Oregon present to you? Well, they're big. You know, 6'4", 6'4", uh, all, all American Guard and UNESCO, all five can shoot the three. Uh, they love to run. Uh, they have, uh, I think they have four kids, in, or four players in, in double figures. Uh, we have five. Uh, I think they're, they're very similar to, to what, what we are in that they love to get out, and they have five people that can shoot the three, love the transition, and they, they love the, the fast style of play. Do you prefer that? rather than going against a half-court set against an Ohio State that likes to run, Oregon looks to be pretty similar. Do you prefer that as a coach? You know, Jim, it, we, we just adjust to what we have to adjust to. I mean, do we want to run? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we want to run. We want to get out and go. But we also understand a lot of times championships are one in a half-court, in a half-court execution, and then on the defensive end of the floor. And I think for us, uh, for us to get up and down the court, we have to rebound the ball. And I think if you want transition points, rebounding is key because you have to have the ball. And to stop transition, you have to have the ball and slow them down. So I, at this point, you know, it's whatever we have to do. It's not really a matter of preference. Coach, there's a video circulating last night with you on the phone with your Buffalo coach. What was your reaction to seeing the Bulls advance to you? Well, you know what, Anthony? I didn't know they did until I was coming off the court and uh, Commissioner Steinbrecher was there. and. Um, you know, I mean, we, we hugged because it was so good for our conference that we had won. And I said, hey, how did Buffalo do? Go, do? And he said, well, they won too. And I go, oh, my God, that's awesome. So we went back and had the dousing of the water. I got a shower, and then we did our little dance. And I thought, you know, I'm going to call Fee instead of texting. You know, I thought, you know, let's do this the old-fashioned way because there's more emotion that goes into it when the call comes. Uh, rather than texting. So I called her and I was real, I was kind of surprised that she answered the phone, but then I saw a video where she was being videoed when I was on the phone with her. So I thought it was great because I think our team was happy for them and I know they were very happy for us. One and two in our league beat Florida State and the Ohio State on their home floors. That's big. What do you think two schools Well, I think it legitimizes it, it validates it to those that the powers that deem wh whether a conference is worthy of two uh, teams or not. I mean, I think for the NCA committee, 
I think what that does is help us this conference down the road because for years it's just been a one team, a one league bid. Uh, and, and we have really good teams in our conference. We have good coaches in our conference. And, and I said this, it, I got a text, um, a picture from uh, Fred Castro at Eastern Michigan, Megan Duffy at Miami, and um, Todd Starkey at Kent State. And they took, a, they took a selfie and they sent it to me, well, yeah, while you're competing in the Sweet, sweet 16, here we are, we're recruiting. We're trying to catch you. You know, and, and, and it, was just, it was just a very nice gesture. And all three of those coaches are pretty brand new. And I said, doggone you guys, you, all you're doing is making my job harder. And I think that's a good thing, you know, because all the, all the coaches, you know, we're, we all like the style of play is good. You know, everybody's kind of getting up and down and, and shooting the three ball and have bigs that can run. And that's the type of athletes that are coming into our conference. And I, I just think it's top to bottom. Well, we've got a pretty solid, solid conference. No secret, if you survive this weekend, you go to Columbus. What's it going to take to get through this weekend? To get to the well, I'm not even going to talk about the weekend. I'll talk about Saturday. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm just going just gonna to talk about Saturday. And, um, you know, I need to watch a couple more games of, of Oregon, and my staff is upstairs working on that right now. But. But again, I think understanding, we have to figure out, okay, what is it that we want to try and take away? How are we going to disrupt? And then how are we going to exploit some of the things that they do offensively? And until I have something firmer in my brain, I, uh, that's all I can tell you right now. Coach, you were dancing around with your players in the locker room yesterday. How fun was last night for you? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. You know, I mean, I think, you know, I walked in the locker room and, and, and again, you know, you're, I'm, I'm walking down the hallway and it's like, you know, we kind of had, I almost tried, I tried to do the cha-cha on the court and I don't know quite what the cha-cha is, but I was just moving my feet and my hips. <laughs> um, and then I thought, you know, when we go, we go in the locker room, everybody was just so happy, so happy. And I saw a little video of Raina's sister doing the Bernie, whatever the heck the Bernie is, and I thought, no, I can't do the Bernie. I'm not even sure what the Bernie is, but I do know how to do the Cupid Shuffle. So that's why I walked in, and, and Tanara was already dancing. So I, so I, I knew as, I, as soon as I said, all right, to the right, to the right, they knew what we were going to do. And it was, you know what, you guys? It was just spontaneous. It was fun. And, um, and I can be a fun person. <laughs> I can be. <laughs> and Coach, what are your thoughts on uh, Nescu and Hebrews? Hebert. Yeah. Well, you think, you know, you look at UNESCO and she's, uh, she does a whole lot. You know, I can't, I mean, I, I thought I read something, I don't know how many triple doubles that she has had, um, you know, an All-American guard, but, you know, Kelsey Mitchell is an All-American guard too. And uh, you look at Mavunga and Hart uh, for uh, um, Ohio State, and I know, I know Hebert is, is a very nice player, and you look at, she's what, shoots 65, 70% from the floor, but it's layups. Uh, but I'll take that starting five any day. And, and I think, you know, um, I think we have the weapons to uh, go ahead on UNESCO and Hebert. I think I said her name right, I hope. I'm sure I'll know how to say it by the time the day's over. You brought up recruiting earlier. What is this, what does this do, if anything? Well, I think, Jim, it, you know, recruiting-wise, you know, when we go up against, you know, some of the BCS schools, you know, the knock is the competition that we play, you know, uh, get into the NSA tournament, well, you're never going to win a national championship you know, at Central Michigan, because, you know, everybody, everybody wants to win a national championship. Everybody wants to get into the WNBA. And, you know, we've had players in the WNBA, it, you know, and, and now we're going to the Sweet 16. And, and again, we take one game at a time, and you never know what's going to happen. But it's, this is a place that it's, it's, it's a family atmosphere. It's very competitive. Um, and if you want to develop, I, I think Central Michigan is a great place to come in and develop as a, as, a, as a player. I think all you have to do is look at our senior class. And I say this all the time. If you are a freshman, and, and I say this too, this senior class did not play a whole lot their freshman year, and they didn't transfer. They didn't transfer. And you know what's all been going around in college basketball. You know, you don't, you don't play your freshman year like you're going to bounce and you're going to go play someplace else. Well, no, they came in, put the work in. 
I think that's what I'm so pleased about with this team because they're reaping the rewards of the hard work so that they have put in. So you know what? You, you may not be the high school All-American. You might not be the four-star, the five-star, whatever. You can be a no-star and come in and make yourself one hell of a player because we've got the staff that's going to help you develop. Question for uh, one of our hometown uh, players, Amanda uh, Frost. Frosty? You know, have you talked to us about what she has meant to your team this season and during this tournament? Well, I think if you look at Raina, uh, <laughs> I always sometimes say she's our X factor. You know, because the other kid, the, our other players get so much attention. Uh, she gets a lot of attention, obviously, on the boards because she's a double-double machine, um, especially rebounding-wise. But the the and I said this before the the late great Pat Head Summit always talked about to win championships you have to rebound the ball. To win games you 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 have to defend, but to win championships you have to re rebound the ball. So when you have a player that has pretty much dedicated herself to going after every rebound, that's hard work. That's a determination. That's her heart on her sleeve going to get that ball. And, and again, I've never had a player in 38 years that's ever wanted to come to a school and leave that school as the, the school's leading rebounder. Everybody wants to come in and score, 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 score. Well, Raina gets her scoring, but she keeps a lot of, of uh, possessions alive for us because of her rebounding. And, you know, she's a, I guess if you want to look in the dictionary and say student athlete, you're going to see Raina Frost's name because she gets it done on the, in the classroom and on the court. Coach, regardless of what happens on Saturday, what do you hope your team takes out with, takes away from this experience? How much fun it is. How much, uh, if you work at what you love, the rewards are just, it's, it's something that you'll always carry with you. And I think if you look at the, the hard work that they've put in, the results they're getting, that's why they're going to be such successful women in whatever field they go into. Because they have faced a lot of adversity, in the, in the, in, at least for the seniors for the four years that they've been here. But they've been able to handle the adversity. They've been able to handle the challenges and the competitiveness and come out on top. And that, you guys, that has to carry over into life. Get off the court. Now it's, now, now it's about life. 2012, you come within two seconds of winning the MAC title. You add Schroll, you get over the hump. Last year, you're the number one seed, you lose right away. Um, Michaela Kelly, can, can you talk to her? Her emergence late in the season, particularly, 20, I think 26 points in the MAC title game, and uh, what she brings well, to the table and help to help this team? Well, I think Twin, uh, and I, I'm going to call her Twin instead of Michaela, okay? Um, my manager's name is Michaela, even though Twin's name is that. But Twin, uh, first of all, her speed and her quickness. I mean, she adds another dimension just with those two things. Her ability to defend. Uh, you've seen the little jumping jack come out in her when it comes to rebounding because when she's aggressive and goes to the glass, she's keeping extra possessions alive for us. But I think the other thing is Presley Hudson always gets our opponent's best defender always and that really opens it up for twin twin has taken advantage of her ability to get to the basket and finish but what has really emerged for us in postseason play her three pointers she's been one of our top three point shooters and think about you've got you everybody knows hudson everybody knows breen but now all of a sudden here comes twin it's like you know i can't remember what team it was was playing off of her and then boom and you know, it's not like it's a one of these. It's like, it's a line drive from center field to home plate. And it's, and it's going down. But that part of her game has emerged that I think people are just surprised at, but we see it in practice. We see it in practice. And um, you know, I've said this last year, if we could have gotten her eligible last year, it might've been a different story. But you know, somebody up there decides, nope, this is what's gonna happen. And it's all right, we got her now. Well, today was, I mean, we pulled in here to Mount Pleasant at 3 o'clock this morning. And tomorrow, so we're off today. Tomorrow we are going to watch Oregon at 9.30. We'll watch film. And then we're going to get on a plane. And we're going to go to Spokane. 
uh, we'll get there and um, we're finding a place just to kind of walk through because it, it'll be a um, it, it won't be where we're going to play but just to get a little walk through just to get all the lactic acid out of the legs uh, something light and then we'll uh, get after it Thursday and Friday put the game plan and everything in and then play Saturday you mentioned the, the outreach from the coaches around the league. Uh, it was, much, it's been great. How much outreach did you get just from the senior community? Does it uh, you, you how much this, well, uh, I, I will tell you what, I, after I finished the press conference uh, yesterday and then finished dancing in the locker room, <laughs> uh, I looked at my phone and I had 265 texts. And it's like, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do all this. And then with Facebook, and then with uh, emails. I mean, it was awesome. But I had so many people reach out to me that I've known. I've known a lot of people in 38 years, and uh, they're just all, they're all happy. They're just they're happy for us, you know. From all from alum uh, to former assistant coaches to former coaches that I have worked with, WN, WNBA coaches, you know that I know. Um, a lot of the commentators from ESPN, uh, just because I know those people, and then a lot of coaches around the country. Again, you know, I, I mean, look at the color of his hair. I know a lot of people. And, and all of a sudden, there they are. It's like, wow. Are you ready for them? Come on okay. Up. Come on up. You might get some one-on-one -on -one requests. Okay. Too, all right. All right. Wood, wood TV. Oh, okay. Oh, that's uh, Grand Rapids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got a few of those. 